have confidence with the Y160 transponder key. So when the customer's watching, you look like a pro. Now the Y160 transponder key was the first transponder key that Chrysler Dodge Jeep had put out in 1999. And they used this key until about 2006. Now the Y160 is in the top 10 transponder keys in the USA today. So even though it went from 99 to 2006, there is a lot of vehicles on the road that are using these. And for sure, if you're doing automotive locksmithing work, you're going to be running into this key quite often. I wanna talk about the Y164 and the Y160. Now, the Y160 is the first key that, that got put out, right, in 1999, and then later on, the Y164 key came out. Now, the easiest way to identify the keys, because on the surface, they look identically the same, but there is one easy way to tell them apart, and that is the color of the key. As you can see in the picture, the Y160 key is a grayish color and the Y164 is a tannish color. Now, however, there is no standard colors for the two. I mean, there is a distinct difference between them. However, all the different manufacturers, especially all the aftermarket ones, well, they've made their own flavor of gray, okay, and their own flavor of tan. Now, when it comes to the transponder chip, the Y160 is using the Texas Instruments 4D64 encrypted chip. Unlike the Y164 that actually uses a Philips chip. Now the test key for the Y160 is just gonna be your standard metalhead Y159, which is also gonna be the same for the Y164 key. Now when it comes to the key shells, I recommend the JMA key shells and the part number is gonna be the TP00-CRH-15 P G. All right. Now you can use this same shell for the Y160 or the Y164. If you haven't already noticed, so much information is the same between the Y160 and the Y164. As a matter of fact, the only thing different is the actual transponder key and the color of the head. Now when it comes to the code series, once again, it's gonna be the same as the Y164, which is gonna be the M code series, M1 through M2. 2618. Now when it comes to duplicating the Y160, all right, it's gonna be identical to the Y159 and also the Y164. Let me play you a short clip on how to duplicate it. Now I'm gonna be using the JMA Nomad to duplicate this Y164 key, okay? Or actually it's gonna be the Y159, the test key for it. And I'm gonna be using side one or side A, sometimes other machines use. So is what's gonna happen, you put the key in the jaw just like this on side one or A. Now it sits on there really naturally, okay, which is a really great thing. And is what we're doing is on this little ledge right here, on this big groove on the key, that's where we're setting it, all right? And as you can see, even with the cuts there, there's still what I like to call enough meat on the bone or enough material to grip the key. However, since this is a tip stop key, meaning there's no shoulder on this key at all, we're going to align it on the tip. You want to make sure you can get as much of the key as possible on the jaw so there's enough material to clamp to. So in other words, so right here you have these two options, right? You have this option here to clamp it or this option here. Now if you use this option, as you can see here, let me just try clamping it down. It's not gonna, I mean, that's a recipe for a disaster right there, okay? That's not gonna work. So you wanna make sure you always use the furthest away possible possibility to clamp it down. Even sometimes if I'm a little leery, um, I'll just take um, like the tip, this uh, little uh, gauge here, little stop, and I'll just run it into it like that on both sides. And that's gonna give me max uh, meat on the bone here on this key. So, but for this example, we'll, we'll go ahead and just back it off right here to the slot and I'll go ahead and put the key in and I'll hold it down and we'll clamp it nice and tight just like that. Now, um, we'll go ahead and take our um, blank key, we'll stick it over here and we're gonna do the same thing. We'll put it in and we'll clamp it down. At this point, we're just gonna go ahead and duplicate the key. Now, of course, you always wanna make sure these are on here tight. You can always sometimes give it a wiggle, make sure you know you like how it feels. So let's go ahead, we'll turn the machine on and cut this one side.
And now remember, on the Y160 key, if your customer has two existing keys present, you can onboard an additional one. However, if the customer only has one existing key, you're gonna have to hook up your programmer and program it. And it does require a PIN code. And as a quick reminder, if your customer has two existing keys, you can easily and quickly onboard an additional key without using a programmer. However, if the customer only has one existing key or zero, well then at that point, you're gonna have to use a programmer to program the key. Now, I hope this information is gonna help you have the confidence you need while you're on the job. Make sure you download the free PDF in the notes below that covers everything that we went over in a nice compact way. And I'd also love to know your comments on the Y160 transponder key. But make sure you also include the hashtag LockBoss. When you do that, you're automatically entered in to win one of five free prizes we give away every Tuesday live on YouTube. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.